So here's what I'm going for, and the big abstract shapes that I like are is this kind of triangle here that's created in the foreground, and then this kind of opposite shape coming up this way of the mountains. I really like this area right here. It will probably be in light. You can see these, these clouds are pushing my light around, as I mentioned. I love the rocks kind of scattered out here in the green. And then there's some nice uh, kind of spring flowers, purple ones here, kind of a flowering bush right here. And this area was burned just a few years ago, so we have all of these burnt uh, pine trees here. And then as they get hit in light, they have this nice light gray kind of shining quality to them. So to get started, I start out with this kind of triangle I was mentioning, and I've moved it down to kind of the lower third, and so this is kind of the green hill dropping down, and then I immediately start trying to find the, the edge of this canyon, and just kind of follow it around, and these two parts that I like a lot are these kind of rounded, these rounded pieces right here, and it's that's pretty much going to be the focal point for this painting. As soon as I had that kind of drawn in, I was looking at the sky and there's these wonderful clouds. And so clouds, of course, don't stay very long, but I liked the kind of general shape that I was seeing. And so I quickly just blocked in where the clouds are. And then as soon as I kind of drew them in, I went ahead and blocked it in with color. And so the blues that I'm using and that are kind of standard to my palette are ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, and then a celestial blue which, and I always add, is, is pretty much like a cerulean. And then after kind of getting the blue blocked in, I jump over to the clouds. And here I'm mixing the cloud color. I have my white, and I dipped into... I have this kind of cluster of purples right now. It's uh, kind of a, an alizarin crimson and a few different purple tones that I'm not even sure what they are without looking at the tubes. But I kind of find this this kind of uh, value and color. I shifted a few times. I got my brush wet with a little bit of my odorless mineral spirits and blocked that in pretty quickly. And I knew that these, these dead trees, these burnt uh, pine trees were gonna come up over the sky. And so I decided to just really soften it out and, and hope that it still kind of had the, the feeling of these big clouds on a blue sky day but I didn't want them to call too much attention knowing that I would have these pine trees coming over the top of them. Jumping down to the foreground, this is kind of the green bush that's on the left and then jumping straight into the, the hillside and just trying to find a nice, you know, it's, you know, when I'm mixing color, I'm kind of asking myself, it's, it's green, it's in the green family. And, you know, is it cool? Is it warm green? And where can I shift those variations? And then it's getting hit by light or it's in shadow. Those aren't conscious questions that I'm asking myself, but that's kind of the, the approach I'm taking when I'm mixing color. And this area here is going to be the base of all of these burnt trees. And so I know it's dark. I probably went a little dark, so I lightened that just a touch. But I'm just going to block in this whole area knowing that I'm going to have a variety of trunks coming up over this. But, you know, when you squint and look at that, which is what I'm often doing, you see that that whole, that whole shape kind of molds together. And so that's what I'm looking at, and that's why I'm kind of blocking this in. Jumping up to the, the part that I like so much on these canyon walls is just trying to find uh, a value and a color to block this all in. It would still be considered a la prima, it's kind of all painted at once, but I'm not necessarily looking at trying to do this in one session. And so maybe it isn't a la prima, but it's, it's painting very directly, but it's being, it's allowing myself to come back and revisit things many times. And so even as I'm putting these things in, I am thinking to some extent that I'm, I'm trying to hint at what I'm actually seeing, uh, hint at the, the feeling of the landscape, but not at all feeling obligated to, to have it finished. You know, each stroke isn't necessarily to a finish, though some strokes may, may end up sticking around. 
Uh, I like having that freedom of knowing that I can come back to this as many times as I want or need to. The clouds are just rolling around on these canyon walls. And so I'm kind of picking and choosing some of the shadow shapes that, that seem interesting. And uh, that's kind of what I'm hinting at here. And then just trying to firm up the, the shape, the, some of the drawing on, on these particular areas. far down this canyon you still see some kind of drama with the light hitting hitting some of the edges and then this big shadow came across the the canyon wall and so I wanted to I thought that would be nice in the painting so I grab it quickly And then jumping down to the rocks. These rocks, you know, I really like how they're kind of dispersed around. Um, but I just picked a, a light value that I felt like could work as a general rock color and placed the location of all the rocks. and then jumping to these burnt pine trees. And I'm just going with oil straight over the stuff that I've already painted. Um, most of the time this stuff isn't thinned out. Occasionally I do dip into a thinner, but this is just coming straight back over. And you can see I'm using a uh, number like two or so filbert and uh, just trying to get a lot of marks in there. It, it, when you're standing there in person, it's quite crazy and hectic with all of the pine trees, all of the burnt tree trunks that you see. And so I know that I'm not going to be able to get every trunk. I mean, I'm not trying to get every trunk, but I definitely want it to feel, I want it to feel like it, it is a dense forest and that it, it is this area. It is Roaring Line Canyon, but not feel obligated to paint every single thing that I'm seeing. But of course, there's little elements like this that that I think help a lot with all of the craziness that will happen to find some areas to, to just hint at little branches, little details like this. With areas like this, I went with a lighter value and then come back to it with some darker notes. And way up on the top of the canyon, you can see trees kind of silhouetting against the sky. And I, it definitely is a nice little element to add to the painting. So here I'm just trying to hint and suggest that, you know, a variety of, of shapes, big, little, they're spaced apart. Some of them are clumped together. Uh, but just try to give it that kind of the busy feeling that, that you get when you're, when you're standing there looking up at it. There's this one tree over on the left side that they kind of stood out from the rest and it looked like it had been like a bigger, maybe older tree, a lot thicker than the rest of the trees. And it had these kind of crazy branches coming off of it. And so it was, it was a tree that I kind of wanted to grab some of the character that I saw in it. And then coming back and revisiting some of these trees, I already have that lighter value placed and then just adding some of the darker, more precise branches to them. And of course, when you're standing there looking at these canyons in real life, 
there is just detail overload but there's all these little shelves there's all these little crags a ton of little details in that I'm just trying to hint at some variety that I'm seeing and then just jumping to some of the the brighter light and this is an area where you know this is what I love about oil paint I love that you can you can have a variety of textures you can build it up you can paint thin but in these areas uh, of interest the, the things that I'm most excited about in the painting is an area where I can find you know an excuse to really load up the brush I love the textural qualities that come out of it and, and trying to find uh, an interesting interpretation of this canyon And here I'm just trying to clean up some of the edge. I don't I don't really carry this all the way down, but I just I was just losing some of the some of the definition in that. And then here I realized that the canyon kind of needed to drop down further as it went back. And so I just came back in with the blue sky, kind of shaved the whole canyon down a bit, and then come back and put the tree trunks over it again. And of course, these are things that just happen. And I think that if you if you see something like that happening and you think, oh no, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to paint over my tree trunks, it, it, it's a it's a super limiting um, idea. And so try to give yourself the freedom to to remove something, to paint something out, to paint it back in. And then down here in the, you know, I don't know if they're if they're lupines or what kind of flowers these are, but it's this nice purple flower, and I'm just trying to hint at at variations that are in there. You know, I don't want to get my you know zero brush out, the little zero liner, and try to paint you know petals on these brushes. I just want it to feel like there was a patch of these purple wildflowers in, in the burned area of the forest. Um, and so, you know, I'm just hinting at the variations that I'm seeing. There's some areas of grass poking through these flowers and just trying to build a first impression of that patch of flowers in the grass. It's a really strange thing to sit back and, and watch myself paint. Because when I'm when I'm there painting, it's it's such an intuitive process, and I'm standing there in person. I am you know I, I am very much so, you know, kind of reacting to what I'm seeing. You know, and if the conditions change a little bit, I'm reacting again, and uh, so it's it's an interesting experience to sit in the studio in a more calm environment and watch this take place. In uh, this tree here, this actually wasn't you know, in the scene that I was painting, it was a little further to the right of it. But as I was looking at the whole landscape, scanning back and forth, I felt like having having another, you know, stronger, darker element on the right would kind of hold the viewer's eye in the painting rather than it just kind of shooting out. And so I'm looking, you can see me looking back, trying to reference that tree. Um, and so I'm okay with doing that, um, you know, moving a tree over and things like that. I do certainly feel an obligation to to the landscape, to the to the area, but little things like this, uh, moving a tree here and there to help the composition out, is something that I'm perfectly fine doing. And that wraps up the end of my day one. Here's just some kind of detail shots of, of where the painting's at on day one. And thankfully I had time this week to get another session in on this painting.
often on my second session of a painting, the first thing that I go for is the thing that bothers me the most. And for me on this painting, the shadows down the canyon walls were the things that were just driving me crazy. They were, they were too light, they were too, too chromatic, they were too blue. And so I decided to just, I actually added black to my palette for today. And so I tapped into the black a little bit to give me more of a, of a, of a pure gray color than I am normally getting. And, and I was able to just try to calm down the chromatic happy blue that I was seeing in these shadows. And then going straight for the canyon wall again. Again, there's so much variety that you see in there. And so I felt like there was too many warm tones. It was too kind of uh, ochre-y. So I went back in with a little bit of a cooler tone. And then adding that black to my palette, I, I just felt like you know this burned area, there are so many stark black trees. And so I'm mixing my black into with a brown and with a blue. Sometimes it's just straight black, but it's giving me the, the kind of stark contrast that I'm seeing there. And some of these areas that I just I didn't get to address on the first session is just where the trees meet the, the grass. Where at the end of day one, it almost looked like a green hillside, and then behind it was a forest of burnt trees. And that's not the case. The trees are coming into this grass, and so there I kind of vary the where they interact with each other, vary where the trees meet the grass. In this area, there's just some bushes around these rocks that are kind of coming up and breaking that that clean plane of, of the grass and where it meets the background. And so I just, I liked the color. I liked the light that was popping on those. And here I probably have a you know number six or number eight filbert, and I can use it fat like this, and I can use it thin to get a nice tree trunk as well. This time of year is, is kind of a special time of year because there's so much green happening. And as the summer goes on, as it gets hotter, all of that turns to brown. And so there are these areas here where the sun is hitting, it's kind of bouncing through the clouds, these nice pops of green. And so I was trying to grab that. And I think that will help really give it the, the feeling of spring. Um, but you can see this, this dark tree on the far right, just below where I'm working. And it stops right where that green is and so it's an area it's it's a kind of an awkward uh, tangent where something something stops and starts at the very same spot and so i want to bring that up and so that that kind of line isn't too distracting and down here in the foreground as i just continue to study that area you, there's some clumps of grass there's some clumps of green around and so i'm trying to hint at you know, in the way I paint is not so much at trying to hint at the clumps of grass, but it's trying to hint at just the the variety of everything that's happening. And so, you know, often it, it doesn't completely make sense. I mean, I'm sitting here watching myself paint and it's like sometimes it's like a neurotic little tick. It's like the brush is just bouncing around, but it's just trying to hint at, at the the tons of variety that I'm seeing in nature. And then, of course, the bugs were killing me. So I'm getting some nice bug spray there. But um, I'm hinting at, at variety. That's what I'm trying to do. Hinting at variety in a way that it, it makes sense in the context of the painting. And I'm also wanting to treat different areas of the painting differently. And so I don't want everything to have the exact same application, everything to have 
you know the same the same brush stroke and so I'm using bright thin thin brushes I'm using small brushes but then I felt like I was breaking up that area a little too much so coming back into variety within the same same shape or painting the same thing I, I get a little bit fatter brush and kind of block in some of these areas back with the color And over here is one of the, the flowering bushes that I mentioned in the beginning. And so I wasn't sure if I was going to get these in there or not, but as, as the painting developed, I felt like it made sense to, to try to put this in there. And so I kind of block in a, a dark shape here, and then coming back over it with some of the lighter notes that the flowers are making. And I thought it was a nice element in the painting. And so there was another one just a little bit further up. And so I pretty much go with the same approach, blocking in a darker color and then coming back with the flowers over the top of it. And as I'm sitting there studying the painting, I realized that I made all of these trees on the right too tall. And in some way it was almost making the, the mountain seem smaller. So I knock all of these trees down and then I come back with a few thinner strokes trying to place, trying to place some of them. Um, but it's an area I kind of go back and forth. I, I knocked them down and then I made them come up taller and then I knocked them down again. But it's, it's just trying to find that balance of of something that feels natural in the scene that's you know replicating nature uh, but that's also just working as a painting in general and then I'm just addressing the edges of some of these plants um, so these bushes just kind of had a nice little glow to them and so I was trying to hint at how it kind of interacts with that background it's kind of a this glowing object against a darker background. And you know, I'm, I'm painting in this way that it's these short, quick little dabs. And it's me just trying to, it's me trying to hint at, at the variety, like I keep talking about, and, and the, the differences that are happening in the tree. Um, but to not feel like like I'm obligated to paint the branch itself. I want to hint at hint at the idea of what's happening. And really it's it's an impression. It's not it's not me trying to paint that tree. It's it's me looking at that tree, studying that tree and then quickly trying to create an impression of that tree in the painting. And there's these nice thin sticks and uh, you know small trees coming up, and so I, I was hinting at some of those. And of course they were everywhere, and it's kind of detail overload. But I'm just looking at enough, you know, painting enough of them, painting enough variety and enough detail to get the the point and, and the impression of this scene across. And that is certainly a, a point of personal preference. And every artist is going to approach that differently. For some, they're not going to need as much detail as this. And for others, you know, this looks like an underpainting to them. And they're going to put, put a lot more detail. And looking at these rocks again, there are areas of this, of kind of a cool side and a warm side. And again, just trying to hint at that idea. And this is an area that, that I really think little things like this are important. Uh, you know, there's these, these cliffs, these canyon walls that are being just slightly hit by light. And so finding, finding the, the little areas like that, I think that it helps the overall feeling of the painting a lot.
And as I was stepping back and studying the painting, I felt like the there were areas on the right side of the painting that just weren't quite as, as addressed as the left side. And, and not that I'm trying to address everything evenly, you know, I I don't want to, uh, to, to address everything evenly. I don't want everything to be painted to the same level, but there just felt like some lacking areas here on the right side. And so I kind of picked a tree out to give it a few more, you know, exact branches and just trying to find a balance that felt nice in the painting. And then I, I see these these shadows, and I, I couldn't see a ton of shadows, but I kind of hinted at a few, and it just gave me some nice ideas. And then I realized that there's there's some shadows kind of bouncing around some of these rocks, and so I went for it, and I think it's an element that, that is really nice in the painting. And I really do think that it's those little elements, it's the the little small things like that. Maybe maybe adding some of those those highlights in the in the canyon in the distance and the uh, the. And I also noticed these these trunks. I kind of went crazy with just dark trunks, but there there was a variety. There were still some kind of warm colors in them. There were some uh, you know the grayish trunks. And so I wanted to just hint at variety, you know, that they're not all just stark black, uh, you know, or this kind of blue and brown, you know, mixture that I had been using. Um, and so here I'm just looking for variety, finding some trunks that could be a little bit lighter, and just finding variety within them. The top of this tree had kind of driven me crazy since the moment I'd put it in. And so I just, I slowed down a little bit, I looked at the actual tree, and it kind of had this swooping top to it, it had a darker spot kind of in the middle to where you could you could see the, the hollowness at the top, it started to kind of go down, and it had some warmer areas in the tree. And so slowing down a little bit, trying to be a little more exact on this tree, I definitely think it helps the painting overall. And this is where we leave off with day two. All right, guys. I'm gonna call it quits for now. That's two. That's two good sessions on this painting. I'm really happy with the progress. I love this canyon. Every time I come out here, I love it more and more. And for those of you on my newsletter list, I forgot to do the giveaway last month. So next week, I'm gonna do two giveaways: one for last month, one for this month. And if you're not on that newsletter list, you can sign up for it on my website. Just sign up for the newsletter. I'll do a monthly giveaway for a small painting. Next week, I'll give away two. Alright guys, if you enjoyed these videos, hit that subscribe button. See you next week.